Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Now, now you know my dad walk on. Hey, man. Check <laughs> it, man. Hey, man. We here in LA, man. And hey, we we actually stumbled up on the gym, man. Mm-hmm. And everywhere I looked, hey, man, when I seen her, man, I said, man, this girl, this girl is something special. You mm-hmm. know, and, and the guys that she was rocking with. That's who, that. That really show who you are. The people exactly. you hang around. I, I remember. I ain't gonna get into it. But <laughs> at the end of the day, man, who you hang around means something. Association brings about assimilation. It does. So at the end of the day, man, I mean, this lady knows a lot about a little bit about everything. I ain't gonna say a lot about everything. A little bit about everything, man. Miss Kenya mm-hmm. Ware is in the building. How you doing, man? Hey, y'all. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> boss Talk One Hundred and One. What a bosses talk. Yeah. <laughs> I just love your voice and I love your personality. I've been watching your videos. Man. And was, your personality matches your voice. Man. You. Your voice is the type. You know how sometimes you can meet people and their voices, you, you're like, I know they're good with kids because that voice. Right. You're good with people because of that voice. I love Are you? people. I love people. I'm humbled. I'm thankful. I'm happy to be here. And what you see is what that's my get? everyday life. Awesome. Wow, that's awesome. That's my everyday life. I love, I, I love love. I Man. take it with me because you remember during the dark times how it felt. So why not just spread love? That's exactly what I was going to say because you say you love love, but I know that we all go through situations where that love, you know, is thrown out of the way because yeah. you're like, you know what, you've been treated so... Because when you love love and you love everybody, not everybody returns that favor back to you. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times you get discouraged, you get angry, you're like, God, why me? Why yeah. don't I get back what I give? That's and my argument gets, with God all the time. But, Him and I be having a conversation in the car about that. But, that's, <laughs> that, but it's funny because you say you want to be like God and he has agape love, meaning when you hate me or when you yeah. do something to me, right. I still apply love to you. Yeah. So that's the, that you're really asking God to do something that he's not with because yeah. he loves you yet and still. Yeah. And we always, yeah. I saw that, I posted that. Ooh, I, posted, <laughs> I posted that the other day because uh-huh. I try to remember that, but how many of us when we're mad or oh, when we we're angry, it. we don't remember these things. You yeah. know what I mean? Because all the things that we do that we get him angry because we don't walk the way in which we should walk. Yeah. And if he was supposed to be like us, all, all of us would be down, you know, a creek without a paddle. Got yeah. that right. Man. And I know that feeling. Let's, mm. let, let's talk about you for a minute because so many interviews you got, all these interviews out here, right. but a lot of times what what was missing was the thing that you always start off with, and that's how we yes. kill them every time, <laughs> you know, because they really don't go there. They too busy trying to get to the, the, to, to the no, they try to get that meat first, right. Right. And, and they don't eat their vegetables. <laughs> you got to eat them veggies because that's so, going to keep you strong. That's right. So yes. we want to we wanna, we wanna get to them vegetables, right? And that's exactly what, um, <laughs> what it is, because what you had to go through in the past, hmm. bringing you up as a child is what made you into who you are today and that's what we want to get into where you were raised your upbringing i mean your mom your dad your sister your grandparents if you remember before death row before death row before ruthless records we want to go before that because all of those lessons you know taught you before you actually had to go through it so tell me about your upbringing oh god so my grandmother june um god they say i'm like her and Grandma June knew everybody. Mm. My, her sister was uh, one of the PR people at Motown, and I never understood what my grandmother actually did, but she knew the good time set. She knew everybody on Soul Train. My grandmother knew everybody. Mm. And I remember my fifth birthday party. I remember her big house. I remember over 150 people there. And then I remember my 10th birthday party, and she rented out a whole roller skating rink over there in LA for me and wow. hired the soul trained dancers to come. Awesome. So my grandmother, she was a housewife, but she knew everybody. Mm. I remember being on the sets of Good Times in the 70s with Janet D- Jackson and um, Relona on the show. Right. Her granddaughter, my grandmother helped raise her. her is Relona the same way how she is in person off camera is the way how she is on camera? Well, rest in peace, uh, Janet Dubois, Relona. Right. Um, same person, you know. Because uh, she was always so upbeat and I mean. Her. That was her and her granddaughter and I 
we were raised like sisters since we were six and we still to this day awesome. connect. We still talk about trying on her wigs inside the dressing room and Janet Jackson, how we, it was a broken typewriter and they blamed the, us kids <laughs> at, on a good time set. So my early life, it was lights, camera, action. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother taught me to be a strong woman. She taught me never to take any shit from a man. Mm. She taught me my way. My mother was 100% there, but Granny was, uh, God, that was, that was the real Medea right was there. Was she married? To my grandfather for, uh, uh, when she died, it was maybe 40, 50 years. Wow. Like 50 years. That's good. So my whole family, everybody's married, you know. That's uh, good. I was the only one that kind of, you know, in, out, in, out. Mm -hmm. I was the other one, you know, but. How did that make you feel? Because I have relatives who <laughs> would tell me um, everybody in my family is married, but I was the first one to get a divorce and I felt like I was the black sheep. I felt yeah. like an outcast because I broke that. It's like I'm cursed. Yeah. How did that make you feel? I was different from everybody. I mean, they lived this up straight life. I was on the other end of the spectrum, but I was successful at that. Okay. They didn't think so. I mean, of course, you know, when I bring home this rapper, um, I'm sneered upon. Mm -hmm. They're like, what are you doing? You know, we've... Because they stereotype him. Oh, yeah. Uh, they wanted me. Uh, my grandmother was an AKA, so I'm supposed to follow that trait. But I was... I wanted something else. I Were you an only child? No, I had an older brother. Okay. And I had a cousin that was raised as my brother. So okay. two older brothers in the house. So you were a tomboy because you had no sisters. Oh, but I was a fly girl, you know. <laughs> and I was the one that, if my mother, I, I stayed in trouble. I remember they, my, my grandmother, they had a lock and key on me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was during those days, you can't let your daughter spend a night at people's house. Mm -hmm. They're men, they have brothers and men and I'm like, oh, the Too first... Too many things happen. My grandmother had experienced that, so right. the lock and key was on me, and I wanted to break out. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how... I, I, but did they ever explain... Because that's one thing I hated mm -hmm. about growing up. You know how parents would tell you you can't do this, or you had to stay inside, you had to be... But they would never tell you why, because it, these dangers, yeah. because of this. Did yeah. they ever explain it to you? It was just that some men are bad, and some brothers are bad. And I know it was from what my grandmother experienced. I mean, I think she was molested, so it trickled down to me. Mm -hmm. And... I was held under lock and key, and I was fighting to get out. I'm like, you guys are gonna let me out this house. I'm, my brother and my cousin can go anywhere. I can't. Because you're a girl. I'm a girl, <laughs> and I'm girl. stuck, and I'm like, no. So I became the best escape artist in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was at New Edition concerts. You're not supposed to be there. I'll take that L when I get home. <laughs> I just, I was normally, I was used to taking the L when I got home. Did you get whoopings? Oh yeah, gr grounded. You take my phone, but my mother did some ill, Ill stuff. I had this new edition jacket. I had got it uh, to the wow. concert. It was ill. My mother said, okay, I'm going to really hurt your feelings. You don't want to come home on time? You're going to do this? She ripped the back of my jacket. That was worse than anything in the world. I'm like, my new edition jacket? Damn it. I love that. That was my heart. And you're going to... I can't imagine. I still got that jacket. And with the rip in there. With the rip in the back. <laughs> and the boys finally signed. I had Bobby had got everybody to sign it, and it, everybody signed it. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. They can't see the back. But <laughs> I look at the rip, and it resonates back to that moment when I got in trouble. That rip. But that's hmm. a good thing, though. Yeah. That's a good thing because we miss that a lot of times yeah. these days. Yeah. Uh, we don't challenge our children enough sometimes in these episodic mm -hmm. events that we face. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that's dope that she did that. I hate I hate <laughs> it for you, but I think it's real <laughs> dope. You know so what I'm saying? Bad. I still, when I look at it, I'm like, <laughs> I'm still rocking. So, so I'm still rocking. <laughs> was there some things during that time? Like, did it was any tragedy of a stri strike when you was young? Anything that you can remember, or did everybody just float through? Because you hear so many stories about gang, you know, all the culture out here in the, on the West Coast. But if you was in a different place, then you was in a different place. Yeah. But were there times or any times that you had any tragedies to strike when you was a little girl? Yeah, because you were born and raised in L.A., right? Yeah, yeah. Right. She know all yeah. about it. I, I, it didn't. I mean, it, we, my grandmother, we, we were in Culver City. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah, we know we about So we were Culver. on the other side during that time. I mean, it wasn't any blacks in L, uh, Culver City. That's I right. was probably the only black girl in my class, one or two, for uh, six years, seven, eight years, you know, through wow. high school. So did you face racism then? Not really. It was a lot of Hispanics, and they showed love. It okay. was never, I never experienced that. I felt like, um, you know, because I was a fly girl. My, it was very important for my grandmother 
that we went to school fly. Hmm. And we would go down to Bullocks on the weekends. I, would, I had Gloria Vanderbilt every color. She wanted us to have the Ralph Lauren jacket, jackets, trench coats, long socks. I, I like mean, your granny. my grandmother kept us right. So I always looked better than the rest so they didn't know where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. But I was, it was a great upbringing. It was no tragedies. Dope. It was mom, you know, my mom and dad had divorced when we were uh, babies. Grandmother, grandfather was there. Uncle was there. The village was there. Was there. So, so you say so your mom and dad divorced? Yeah, they divorced when, when you were, uh, yeah, we were, they were like 23 years old. We might have been one and two years old. My was, brother, your, was your dad still involved in your life? Not really. Not really. He, 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 he stepped away. He was young. Mm -hmm. But then my stepfather came in when I was seven or eight years old. Okay. And it, that foundation was there. Okay. Wow. You know, it so was you there. was able to transfer over. Did Dad ever come back around any just to try to like he, I want to see my daughter? You know, you, my, my, me and my brother. He came around, but it was still what because he had started. I think he he started a new family, mm -hmm. and my mom started her new found okay. life. So right. I felt like I didn't skip a beat because my grandfather was there. Like I had the best of the best the best Christmases, the best everything. So I felt like I didn't skip a beat. I get That's it, good. I get it. I didn't skip a beat. Like the whole, my uncle was there, everybody was there, my village was there. That's dope. So I felt like when I look at now with my dad and some things my brothers went through, I'm like, my mother knew what she was doing, you know, mm -hmm. to move away at a early age. But the things that I always say that, why I always ask people to make sure you know both sides of the family. Oh yeah. Because there are traits that are embedded in your DNA without you even Absolutely. being around that person yeah. that all of a sudden when you start to get to know that person, you're like, oh, that's why I'm like that. Yeah. That's why I do this. And although you've never really hardly been around that person, it's mm -hmm. something that just transfers. Mm -hmm. And then also for medical purposes, yeah. if something you know is strong in their gene on that side, yeah. that you need to, when you go to the doctor, you're like, you know, well, my father has this or my grandfather on that side has that. Yeah. Something you need to you know, tell your daughter and so forth. So those are the things that I definitely always tell people. You need to know your family because. Yeah. My dad and I now, I mean, close is close. My stepmom, who he married after, Close is close. Oh, awesome. We are all one big happy family. And my mother, my mother died in 04, but her and my her, my stepmom were able to have this amazing bond. Don't, mm. don't. So every, everything came, we came full circle. I didn't know violence. I didn't know um, things. Uh, it was situations that led me to the other side dating men like that. Because I was supposed to be with a Kappa and he's supposed to be a doctor. That's what my mom planned. But it, they didn't know it was certain situations that led me that way. And what situations are you talking I about? I mean, this when growing up, and I, I remember one thing that resonated. I think I was eighth, ninth, tenth grade, and we were in Westwood. It was a Westwood or Marina Del Rey, and someone they were snatching chains. And I remember I had chains on. And these guys came up to us and tried to rob us, and the guy I was with ran. Wow. Mm. And he was that he was the guy that, you know, you're supposed that to be wanted. with. Uh, he's a good yeah. family, good guy, everything. But no backbone. He ran. And it was one guy there that in and, and a guy named Eric Martin, I love him to this day. Eric was mixed. He looked more on the white side. He was small and he stood up to these guys. My date was gone down the street. Mm. Gone. The kind your mom would have wanted My to mother be wanted with. me with that guy. And I, at that mo moment, I'm like, I would never date a man who cannot protect me. Exactly. I want to feel protected because. You want a thug you, in your life. Yeah, I got to have somebody who's going to stand up. You ran and left me in. Right. What? You know, Anything could happen. Yeah, he ran, and I'm. This is young. I'm young at this point, and I'm like, and that, that, that right there, took me there. So, yeah. so when you when you were when you were just a, a young, uh, a beautiful lady, I can only imagine them guys, and, and, and being that you was in a, a place where it wasn't many blacks, Culver City at the time, yeah. you was like a you was a standout. You know what I mean? It Think was, about that it, for a second. No, but listen, when I'm in Culver City and there's no, I'm young, yeah. right? There's no black guys around. So being a pretty young thing, PYT. I was, uh, <laughs> being at, at my elementary school, starting off, I was the only black there, so I was attracted. I didn't know anything about black guys at that point. Mm -hmm. You I was attracted like, to the white boys? I was liking the white boys. What? And, and, and the Hispanic boys, that's all I knew. And I remember, I'm growing up in Culver City, so I got my Schwinn bike. I got my my little uh, uh, my radio, my boombox, my dolphin shirts, my Quicksilver. I was a surfer girl. I was a Vans girl. That's mm. what I knew. Mm -hmm. That's all I knew at that point. 
and music. I'm talking about Death Row, Death, Death, no, Death Leopard, all the rock groups. That's all I knew. And then I remember Michael Jackson came out, and they're like, oh, you're supposed to like Michael Jackson. I'm like, really, I am? <laughs> and I had wow. posters on my wall of all the Stray Cats and Oingo Boingo and Bananarama and Go-Go's. I'm a black white girl because I didn't know anything different. The Valley Girl thing was going on too. I was a Valley Girl. That's right. Oh my God, the movie came out and I'm like, gag me with the spoon. <laughs> it was all about that, right? And I didn't get to the black side until <laughs> until I got to a uh, guy junior high and okay. that's where it got real. Oh. Mm. New edition came in. I'm like, ooh, let me take down these rock posters. I took them all down. We replaced them. <laughs> Bobby Brown and New Edition and all oh, these guys are so cute in junior high. Oh my God, what was I thinking? Yeah. That, the black it man. Kicked in. Oh my God. I was like, oh my God, can I want you, you, you. <laughs> I was wow. deprived all these years. Not saying the white guys, they were They were cool. They were cool, but my brothers. Oh my brothers. Man. So how did how old was you when you met Dad? That's a, oh God. Okay. <laughs> we gonna go. I there. was like late, late teens, um, twenty ninth. It was I was cause I was I'm I'm like two years older than him. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he, you know, Snoop hooked us up and. Snoop hooked y'all up. Hooked us up. But how did you meet Snoop? Uh, okay, so let's, let's go. Okay, story. let's talk about. Okay, so yeah, let's my go whole back life. To, yeah. Because I got my first job at 15 years old at Nordstrom's, right? Okay. Cold. So I'm going to high school and working at Nordstrom, and I kept that job for a long time. And a girl named Tracy. What were you doing at Nordstrom? I started in children's shoes, and I made my way up to the assistant buyer in salon shoes. Wow. Okay. So Dope. clothing was around me. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, it started down there, but it right. was around me. Right. And I met Tracy. She would come up there, and I noticed this little fly black girl, young, spending money all the time. I'm like, okay. What I'm, you doing? Yeah, like, what you, but you, I'm going to help you because I'm getting, you know, I make money off of, you know, off my commission sales, off right. of this. So we became friends. Mm-hmm. I give her discounts, became friends, and she had just hooked up with Easy E. She's a uh, fly girl. I'm like, okay. We lived in the same neighborhood. We we had a lot in common. So we started hanging out, and this is when her and Eric, I get, they had just had Evie, little girl Evie, okay. and I became my best friend. Like, we were thick as thieves everywhere uh, Tracy was, Kenya was. Okay. Met Easy. And was, was this before Ruthless or during the time they was established? Ruthless. This is during this Jerry Heller time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you hit them right at that point where we would go up there, and I remember we would go up to Jerry's office and get her child support all the time. I would go up, I would be there with her. I'm like, okay, we're going. To, where we going? We got to go up to Woodland Hills to go pick up my money. And I'm like, okay. So they wasn't they together. They showed you in the movie. But they wasn't together. But they was they. But but they but they took care of the baby together. Yeah. Oh, they he, was together off and on. Eric was an, an amazing father to his children. Yeah. He 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 made sure they were right. He made sure the mother had a car, a nice house, nice clothes. I I, I respected that about him. Wow. He he cared. He cared at an early age because he was young himself. He was young. But the thing I can't stand about the industry is the fact that yes, you took care of home the kids but you're not there because you have to work all the time yeah. you see what I mean yeah. so a lot of times I always say money isn't everything spending time and quality time raising them is everything but sometimes some some of the people who've been sitting where you are say well I gotta make the money I know that the person who is raising them yeah. I have all the trust in her yeah to make the right decision yeah. what do you think about that I mean you know here these rappers I mean you <laughs> You have to understand these guys that are getting all this money, they didn't have the women at first. I mean, some of them did. They might have been drug dealers before, but they're getting all this money, and with that money comes all these women that they've never, mm -hmm. ever, ever had. Their egos are stroke. They want the more. They might have one quality woman, and but they want, it's, it's quantity at this point. You know, so I, I look at Easy. Easy's, um, it's all the women. I, I want all of them. I can't mm -hmm. spend time with everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. And the women be they accept this. Okay, well, I'm just the baby mama. Uh, I was never a baby. You know, I don't never look at myself as a baby mama. A baby mama. No, I got into this relationship with dads. I'm like, it, 
it, we were hooked up. It was kind of like we dated. We went through every element together. We started off sleeping on my mother's floor because I had a home, but then he needed a home. Right. Then we started off with the, be- the, the one room apartment with the bed coming out the wall. And then we, then we went to the two bedroom. Then we went to the three bedroom. Then we went to the rental house. Then we went to the buying of the house. We climbed that, at that whole thing together. We were broke together. We were starving students together. So going back to, so Easy e mm-hmm. you're around them. Mm-hmm. So is that how you met Snoop? Yes. So Tracy, um, you know, her and Eric were on and off, but she's good friends with, of course, Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. So they were still keeping contact. So Dr. Dre's leaving death row, I assume, at this point. I mean, not death row. He's lo- leaving Ruthless. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're out. We're out over there by the Beverly Center, and I'm hanging out with Tracy and a girl named Carla, and we go meet up, up with, um, what do you call it, Dre and some of his friends. In walks Suge and this skinny boy, Snoop, and nobody would have ever recognized them. I mean, they were nobody at this point. You right. know? Of course. They weren't nobody, and we just all hung out, and everybody, the people were flirting, doing things, but... I was in the corner doing my homework. I was at Cal State Northridge, and Chug took notice to me not joining in the party, smoking right. and partying and popping. I was in the corner because I had my oceanography homework due the next day, and I, had, I wanted to hang out, but I had to get it done. Mm-hmm. So he took note of that. So the evening went on, and I needed to get home, and everybody was probably high, drunk. So Suge was like, where you live at, girl? Where you live at? And I'm like, I live in Baldwin Hills. He said... All right, I'm gonna give you a ride home. Your friends, they too drunk and high. It was so, they were partying and I needed to get home. So he gave me a ride home and he's like, you know. He didn't look very intimidating? No, I mean, he, nice, nice shirt, you know. No, because I, I'm from, I'm, I'm in Baldwin Hills you at this point. To, so okay. Culver City family moves to Baldwin Hills. So okay. I'm in the black Beverly Hills okay. at this point. So no, he looks like every Everybody typical else. guy okay. around the neighborhood. He gives me a ride home and he takes notice. He said, so what were you studying? whatever he says I admire that you know you took sort of been studying and we became friends at that moment I think he just took I wasn't flirting I wasn't hanging out it was a lot of guys in the room and quite frankly I wasn't interested in them you know mm-hmm. so Snoop ends up I mean we connect again at some point but Snoop hooks me up with his cousin he, and Daz is not he hasn't he's not down here yet Daz's mother um or Roberts University. She was... Aileen, uh, right? Yeah, Aileen. 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 I love that woman. Rest in peace. That woman was good to me. Um, she was out there, minister, doing, you know, raising her son in the Bible Belt of Oklahoma, moved, got out of Long Beach and said, I got to take him away from this. I need right. him to be raised somewhere else. They settled in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Daz is down there. He learned the music. He learned the keyboards. He learned everything down there. He was a part of the church band. He, it was every, the foundation was made down there with mm-hmm. music for him. At a young age, but really down there with all the instruments. Um, Snoop gets a big deal. You know, that deal comes, uh, the, the soundtrack comes. He's all over TV and all the family, they come in from everywhere now. That's with Death Row, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it, it was kind of when Death Row was forming because they weren't. They were forming. They, they were forming at that point. Yeah. Daz was Snoop's most, uh, you know, the, that was the cousin, but he was talented. Mm. There was nobody else talented like Daz. And he probably was level-headed. That's what he yeah. was looking at, too. Yeah. Snoop, I mean, he could have brought anybody. He has a big family, but he brought his cousin Daz. Daz was rapping, making music down there, mm-hmm. and he brought his cousin along. Wow. And and so when you seen Dad, as soon as you seen him, you're like, I love this guy. No. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's get to it. <laughs> what did you what did you have? What was the first thing he said to you when he saw you? Well, I'm walking in, so I went, I'm 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 gonna break down the whole okay, the mm-hmm. rabbit. Mm-hmm. Me and Tracy hop out of her Easy had got her this Acura Legend. It was on some Barbet rims. This that's goes. what I had. Yeah, oh, when God. I met her, yeah, yeah, that's what she had. He yeah. hated it. Oh, he hated God. it. We I got her something. Wow. I love that. Y'all killed it. Oh, my God. We had our Dooney and Burks on. We had our diamond earrings on, stepping out the car. We was fly out. You want to meet my dude. They done hooked this up. They done set it up. Oh, they set it up for so you. They you. They set it up. We, we coming to over. Did you see a picture of him before you, no. actually? So you didn't Snoop even know? Snoop just said, because there's no internet. There's nothing at this point. Okay. So he looks like me. I'm like, he looked like you, Snoop. He got curly hair, Snoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, Snoop's hair was fly. I'm like, uh-huh. so 
I walk in and half day is like, your man is here. You're, they're teasing me. Dr. Dre, your man is here. It, it was a big deal that we're hooking up. And I'm like, why? So I seen him and, and you know, Daz gets mad at me. You, you say I wasn't cute then. Daz, you were cute, but you weren't my, it, it, you didn't engage me. I was a fly girl at that point. <laughs> and you know, you were just, you. I he was to, shy. Yeah. He was shy. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know what they always say, well, you were too beautiful, you intimidated me. I just expected, I, I don't, you know, my eyes were, you know, I'm, I'm bowing hills and I see a lot and I've been around a lot. I know guys that like me. I know big drug dealers were liking me at that point. But then I was like, hmm. So I, I was kind of mad. Mm -hmm. I, to say it the least, I was... It was a condescending, it was an anticlimactic event. Yeah. She thought it was going to be more than what it ended up being. I was disappointed. And, you know, he just... Granted, you know, he just moved down here and, you know, he didn't, he didn't necessarily have the finer things in life right. at that moment. You know, I was working and fly and doing my thing and I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, so I left at so that did you, point. I was about to say, did you walk out? I walked out and Dr. Dre's teasing me walking out. He says, yo man's in there, you better go get him. I'm like, fuck oh, yeah. you. They gassing it. They gassing it. They gassing it. And, you know, no disrespect to Daz, but, it, you know, I'm... I'm a fly girl at that point, and I'm, you know, I'm used to certain things. So how did he break through? Dads, honey. So I went back. I went back to dating my corny college boys at that point. I'm like, I'm just going to stick to this. And I remember being on other dates with my college guys. Okay. Dads would be blowing me up. Uh, They're going to kill us at the studio. You got to come and get us. Anything that would frighten <laughs> me to come and get him from the studio. He would call me up. You got to come and get us. There's some stuff going on up here. You don't want nothing to happen to us, do you? And he just worked, he worked through them channels to get me to pick him up, to take him, to come pick him up. He's like, I'm about to work this girl. You're going to be my girl. And he worked it out, you know, and How long I, did I, it couldn't, take? I couldn't, maybe a couple months. Okay. You know, he kept on latching to you. He was relentless on Kenya, baby. He was on it. And I'm like, oh God. And I would, this guy, I, this poor guy I would always be on a date with, I would have to say, I got to leave right now. You know, I got to go pick up. I will always have to leave this, this one particular guy. And he was like, you know what? I give up. I mean, if you want to go with those, those gangster those guys, thugs. you can go with those gangster guys. Okay. <laughs> and eventually it, it worked out. I remember I, every song resonates where I was. And I remember Shantae Moore, Precious was out at yeah, that point. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it was, I'm like, that was dad's album at that point. It was all, it was him. Mm -hmm. And we worked it out. I, re I remember being with him the first time in Vegas when the first person noticed who he was because he was nobody. And then he, next thing, somebody was like, aren't you Dad's no Snoop's cousin from the dog pound? I remember. And I'm like, oh, now they're noticing you. Oh, they, and oh, that's they when the out. ego went. Oh, he started getting fly, didn't he? Oh, I got fly. Mm -hmm. When the people mm -hmm. took note, they got fly. He started. He had, he had to move with the, with See, the crew. You wanted a fly guy. Yeah. No, but you know the ego and all that. It comes with it. It came with it, and you know that you know we. But he still did the things at home. He still. He, Dad's would always go how back. How did we to get his, to? Your, how do we get to your house? Like, how do y'all even get to you and him are living together? But we, like I said, we start. We took stairs. Uh, stair steps. We started After two with months, it. three no, months. No, 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 no. It took a long time. I mean, this is a year. That's or what two. I thought. And then this is here. Here's the climax right here, you guys. My mother, I, I had, a, I lived with them, and Dad's would always get in trouble because he would come try to come and pick me up every night after the studio time yeah. and he would hunk by my window and my parents would get infuriated so I remember dad said we're not going to go through this no more mm -hmm. no more you're going to move out with me now you're going to move with me I'm going to come and pick you up tomorrow night I'm going to toot the horn and get all your stuff <laughs> how old were you at this time? I mean, I mean 19, 19, 20, 19, 20, 19, 20, 19, 20. what did your up? parents say? I escaped at 2 o'clock in the morning he tooted oh. the horn I had my, all my bags in my hand and I've never been home since wow. what did your parents say? that's the part I'm like they, I would have been furious I, they could see it coming he they wasn't. could see it coming because we were every what night a better way like mom I they were go. getting on me you're going you, to respect this house you're not going to be leaving at 2 o'clock in the morning mom I'm dating a guy that Two o'clock in, in the morning is where this is where it is. I mean, we're in the studio all day. They got this chronic. You could have left going. that next day and be like, mm -mm. you know, 
See you later, Mom. We went. I left my car at the house. I got in that car. We moved to Woodland Hills and never rest went is home. History. That was the, the rest mm. was history. And our our apartment. We lived in this. Okay, so that Snoop's first. He, they had a rat infested apartment first with all of them <laughs> first in Hollywood. But now we're moving on. Snoop is moving on up. Everybody else is still mediocre. Um, they moved Snoop into the Summit. And the Summit was an exclusive townhouse uh, place in Woodland Hills. Like all the people lived there. Like Brian McKnight was Snoop's neighbor. Okay. But they moved us. Or the other side, where the beds still come, the beds were coming out the walls, and everything was all in one room. You know, wow. Daz and Corrupt had to swallow. What I mean, hey, Snoop was a star. Let me right. ask you this: I, I want to go back a little bit because it was two one three before it was uh -huh. before they even went to just Snoop and the dog pound. Two one three really in high school. Correct. So yeah. was 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 Dad still in Oklahoma when it was two one three? Oh was, yeah, because he's yeah he's that's in, what I thought. Yeah, he's he's in Oklahoma because that's high school time. Yeah, yeah. So that, I get it. So mm -hmm. Warren G, two. Nate Dog, and and Snoop had this bun. Yeah, they and, they're the ones that they, they got discovered first. So of course Dr. Dre and people know they're brother their brothers only by marriage um correct dre's mom married warren's dad yeah and they were brothers by marriage so how that 213 started you know or or they were 213 but then they gave uh dre the tape in hopes of getting correct. a deal i remember him saying that. yeah but snoop was the only one dre wanted I, yeah i could see that though he will fly he didn't he, he didn't want the group he wanted snoop he plucked him out i'm gonna take him but everybody else stays there but Snoop knew how to get in there and maneuver and bring his whole he brought vision the whole to life. Dog. Snoop the brought dog everybody. Mm -hmm. he, his first apartment, man, it was about 16 of them living there. That's D.O.C., that's Half Dead, that's Ty Cuz, that's Lil C Style, Big C Style, uh, Corrupt, uh, God, Warren G, Let me ask Nate you, Dog. I gotta stop. What, no, I got to stop. I want to I ask you, was this the D.O.C. with the voice or without the voice? This is without the voice because remember, he already he got red. into it before. He was already, he was N.W.A. when he got into that correct, accident. Correct, correct. Yeah, so okay. he, this is this is Tracy without the voice. Yeah, yeah. And was Snoop um, girlfriend back then, which is his wife now, yeah. was she there as well? She was there. Wow. Shantae's been, uh, I met her when she was 17 and mm -hmm. Snoop uh, instructed me to put are her under my wings oh. and Shantae stayed with me at my house a lot uh, my mom's house I taught her how to drive her first stick I used to let her at 17 without a license uh, she would drop me off at work pick me back up um, I would go up to her high school which is Long Beach Poly put, pick her and all her friends up because I'm mm -hmm. older than them so I go pick them up after high school and they be with me so they didn't wow. have no kids or nothing at this time. Uh -uh. No kids. They were just together just and together. they loved each other. Oh God, love. That I was love. Snoop. I love their relationship because yeah, they are very transparent. Yeah. Right. I they're very transparent, but I love the fact because being in the industry, I was looking at them, not only them, but looking at a lot of actors, actresses who are actually together. Because a lot of these relationships don't last. They come yeah. together, they break up, they move on to somebody else because it's hard, whether because of infidelity or trust or money or whatever, it mm -hmm. breaks up these families. And I'm mm -hmm. like, my hats go off to a lot of like Denzel, yeah. like um, Angela Bassett, like certain people who have well, been married. We're we going to get in this rap thing. For like, a uh, very long time well, and kept you, it together. You got to say yeah. LL Cool J. Right. Uh, ja I love ja Rule. Mm -hmm. uh, these people are still with their, with, their with the people who they was with. They've been together forever, yeah. and I'm like, how do they make that work? How do yeah. they do it when so many can't? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, but it's a lot. I mean, I, I, the rap life is no joke, you guys. It's no joke because women, it's a whole nother level of relentlessness. I mean, I've been at tables and girls who come up and try to sit on people's laps and stuff. It, I mean, relentless. It was no respect because the one, these women in the 90s, they wanted what you had. Right. Mm -hmm. no, and you I had to, it. and they wanted, they, by all means necessary. I mean, I had girls had around me. Up. Oh, man, I mean. Daz, you better, you know damn oh, no, well. no, they knew, but, the, but they, them girls knew me because. I was gonna come and get you. I mean, mm, me and my squad scared. was gonna show up, and you better, you better exit the back door when we when we come. But you but, have to be like that. But then, you know, aside from the women, dude, you the one to starting all this stuff. You bringing all these women and telling them God knows what. I had to flip it because I'm like, he probably told these women we're not together. Exactly. Mm. So uh, you know, I stopped blaming it on these women because these girls don't know me. They're doing their job. You know, as being with groupies, whatever they are, they're doing their job. You know, you have to have respect for me, you know, and some women could stay. 
I'm too fly to stay with something like that. I'm do that. I mean, if you you're not gonna embarrass me when you, the embarrassment comes in, you're on your own. Well, you think about some of these men who's never had that attention before, never oh, yeah. had that money before. Yeah. Sometimes it gets to their head to know that um, certain women of certain status and certain caliber yeah. actually paying them attention now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, so. it, but the women, honest, uh, honestly, the women were below our belts. I mean, mm. my, my main <laughs> problem was that how you going to go from first class to coach? I mean, I used to tell dads, I'm like, let me hook you up with a bad bitch. I mean, please, <laughs> because what you're bringing is Not that. trash. Right. I mean, it's, it's embarrassing me. Make me feel some kind of way, because when I stepped that, when, when it was Kenya season, oh, I brought the noise. But you know what men would say? Men would say that they date, or not even date, but they mess with, you know, below, because it's not that they're going to leave you to go to that person. Yeah. They're staying home. Yeah. So that's what some men would say. Yeah. yeah, when you when you think about it, Joe, the the whole movement during that time, yeah. it was a different time. Um, when you look at, I, I want to go back to EZ a little bit because RIP to EZ, yeah. he was a he had to be somewhat of a great businessman and even to deal with that at such a young age, right? Yeah. So you seen the Tracy coming in buying all this stuff because she had afforded it through EZ's and and yeah. and and just that's crazy so jerry heller was he real open with the money or was he tripping with the money or did you ever see a time where 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 because he's a he's a guy white guy jew uh he's a businessman yeah but the, but the thing about it here's the business man a lot of those guys take it too far and they're protected over money that's not theirs and that's what i see in him like you're protecting money that's not yours you know if if this man is out making babies then he has to take care of them it's not your job to dictate what these kids have mm -hmm. you know i mean this man went out and got these babies mm -hmm. this man is conducting this relationship it's not your money and i just seen that he you know was protecting this man's money probably for his benefit yeah, just the way the movie kind of showed right. it yeah. as well. Did you ever, like, when you and Easy, would, give me something that Easy and you, you know, something that happened between you and Easy, a conversation or just something that stuck with you that happened with you and Easy? Yeah, you know what? With Tracy, we were always on weekends because uh, Easy stayed in the summit too. Okay. But he was there before Snoop got there. Okay. And every other weekend, Tracy would stay out there. That was her place, and I would stay there with her. And, it was just amazing. I'm like, all his, po all his stuff, his clothes were there. Every and I'm like, wow, damn, he's really looking out for her. Wow, you know, he really locking he, in. He, and I remember going over uh, Mrs. Wright's house, and Eric's two kids, Eric and Erica, were, they were baby younger at that point, and they were there. And uh, Mrs. Wright used to take care of the kids, and we used to go over there. Tracy had a great relationship with his whole family, and I remember her being so kind. And Eric, this was, you know, he was just out there, you know, a ladies' man. Let me ask you this. When he, caught, when he, was, uh, when he got uh, diagnosed with, well, the AIDS thing happened and he was gone to me. Yeah. Being in Texas, it seemed like when it happened, it was just that quick. Yeah. Was it that way for real? Or? Mm -hmm. It was, I remember we hearing about it. And next thing you know, I hear Tracy calling me from the hospital that Eric was dead. And I, me, and I was with Dads and Corrupt. And, Everybody broke down crying. I mean, we were all, you know, we had our tips, but nobody wanted him to be dead. Like, it got real at that point. I'm like, he's dead and AIDS. So we didn't know what to think. I'm like, how does he die from AIDS? And he's a ladies' man, and he don't like guys. Like, that was a well, homosexual yeah. disease right. at that point. So I'm like, that, man, that didn't sit right with me because I'm like, nah, something something happened. You know, something happened to him. That's what I'm saying because it, it was rumors and, yeah. and it's, it was just a rumor. Uh, they showed a clip on Arsenio Hall all the time about uh, Suge Knight and saying about he stuck him with some, with, you know, shoot him with a little easy E. Yeah. I know you heard this. I've heard it a million times. Okay, <laughs> well, how do you, how do you look? Because you was in the midst yeah. of the whole situation. Right. Do you think that was just an accusation? That was his cap. He was you see what I'm saying? Fun. He having fun. That's he it. You just, know his character. Yeah, it's character. He did, you could look on his face, he was having fun. You know, I think easy, whatever happened to him was bigger than all these local black people. It was okay. bigger than that. It was bigger than that. I mean, uh, it's some, it was something bigger. I don't, most black people can't pull that off. They're not thinking on that level at that point. Come on, you guys. I mean, it was bigger. Something happened, but I think it was on a much larger scale. Yeah, something, it, maybe a blood even, transfusion or something, something like that. Something like that. Something yeah. could have happened. I mean, it could have happened at the hospital. It could have happened anywhere I, during I think, that time. That I was think a it was just something that 
happen that, you know, because you don't know. I mean, maybe you needed blood. Maybe you gave blood. You don't know. Maybe you got a tattoo. Who knows at that point? But I don't, but Suge, that's funny. He's just having fun. Yeah, I just, I had to bring it up because it's such a. He can't even think on that. I'm like, dude. On that level, like, you're not even that fly to do that. Third gadget. (laughs) (laughs) Nobody was thinking on that level at the time, but he made that, he made that, when he said that, it's like, damn, how would he even think like that back during that time? He had to be a a thinker to even say that, though. Sure, smart guy. I mean, college guy is smart, came mother and father, uh, was still married until his mother, rest in peace, passed away. She was uh, uh, the cheerleader. He was the quarterback. He came from a solid family that mar- were married for 55, so they, 50 something years. Were they weren't wow. gang affiliated or nothing before no. him? No. So Shug he just came up with this on his own. And where did he get that? Because when I think about Suge Knight, for me being so green, as they say, that don't know nothing about nothing, no. when you hear about Suge, you hear about this guy who's this big old thug and he's so intimidating and he gets And the movies he make he him want. look like that yeah. too. That's how I saw him. Mm-mm. He was the he was that was an image that came you know maybe after football. But no, he was the youngest. Had two older sisters. He was the baby. He went to school. He went to college. He followed the you know the protocol. The protocol. Mm-hmm. But you know what happens when money comes? I mean, you know different things happen. Now mm-hmm. he grew up in Compton, so he's he knows all the people around there. Like you can grow up there and be affiliated and not be a game not banker, be, right? He knew everybody. So when Death Row came, you know, and, and let's take it back, he's bodyguarding. So he's learning the game, Bobby Brown bodyguarding, this person bodyguarding. He learned the game. And, you know, he knew, the, he knew the game. He had some gangster mentality because he grew up in that. So it was easy to, you know, take the image, you know, and roll with it. Wow. I got a question. So um, with you having that new edition jacket that got ripped, mm-hmm. when was the first time you actually met New Edition and how? Huh. Okay, so 89, mm-hmm. uh, backstage, concert. Um, uh, God, we, it was, uh, they always, Greg Mack, let's take it back, because Greg Mack of the Wave, it's a radio station. He used to run um, the big radio station here in LA called KDAY. It was the first radio station that brought rap. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. every week uh, they would have high school, junior high, high schools come up there and represent their high school. So, of course, I'm coming up there, you know. So when I used to come up there, Greg took a liking to me. He was like my big brother and let me come up there every week, mm. represent my high school. And I met everybody. So Greg is the one that got me tickets to the concert there, you know, and got me my jacket, got my tour jacket and got, got to meet the guys. So here's the crazy thing about it, all right? During that time, uh, because I went to a couple New Edition concerts, but one particular time I took uh, Kim, uh, Kim Etheridge. Kim Etheridge is the sister to Bobby Brown's wife now, Alicia. Wow. So Kim and I went and we had to bring Alicia because every concert, me and Kim grew up in Culver City together. We were Culver City girls. Alicia was maybe four or five years younger than us. So we would always have to babysit her. Mm -hmm. And... Alicia would always be with us. We went backstage, and who would who would have thought that little Alicia would be marrying Married. Bobby Brown? Right. Alicia was on the Rump Shaker video. She was the girl who played the horn. She went to... Uh, so they knew each other for a very long they time. Long, they knew each other. Then she became Macy Gray's manager, and she, ultimately Bobby's manager. Mm-hmm. And she was the one that was there when Bobby and Whitney were getting married and Bobby went in the bathroom and hid in the bathroom because he didn't want to come out and she's the one that talked him into coming out the bathroom to get married that day so they've been friends forever Mm. and then that's been my little sister since she was uh, eight years old she got in her her first bike wreck with me I had her on the handlebars and we got hit so I'm like in Culver City (laughs) so full circle I mean my girls we grew Mm. up with and still friends to this day were you ever friends with Whitney as well no. Did, no. never never had met Whitney never had met Whitney no, I want to just ask about uh, the, I, I'm, I guess I'm gonna get back into death row the death row thing is something else because that was a big that was a big deal this is where the money came when I say mm-hmm. money this was crazy money at that time for the time we was in you know what I mean right. and Dad's he's uh he's he's doing his business, you know what I mean? And yeah. he's over there like you just explained, but I mean, 
we've interviewed so many people that didn't have the financial aspect of this thing situated, just like yeah. Jerry Heller was able to yeah. do things with easy. Yeah. Um, how was his uh, uh, business sense during that time for, to be such a young guy? Mm -hmm. For you, you know, you mm -hmm. was in the midst of it. Yeah. Daz was learning. I mean, I think we were all learning as we were going, and he depended on me to, you know, like on the house side to, you know, tell him about how you buy a house. Um, okay. How, you know, how we get a loan, um, you know, closing. Um, when we buy a house, the things we need to do, you know. So we, I knew from grandmother, you know, owning houses, my mom and all that. Right. So I was able to bring that. And we kind of learned together. He didn't know much about Yeah, that's what I thought. Nothing. He didn't. He didn't know about the finances. He didn't know when he signed. I think he signed, him and Corrupt signed their deal for $5,000. He didn't know. Wow. And he didn't know. But think about that $5,000. That $5,000 turned into millions, millions and millions, of millions and millions of dollars. That boy, I remember, I had never in my life up to that point seen a million dollar check come in and come in and come in. <laughs> I had never. I had never... People ask me about death row, and I've never seen a record label in the world, and I've been around different people, different labels, um, that their artists, family, lived as good as we did. I've never seen that. We wow. lived good. Yeah, when you look at him and just the way he's structured, you know, he would. T I heard him say him and Suge would get into fights, you know, far as, uh, you know, little scuffles or whatever. No. Was this a true statement? No, him and Suge. So, he, is, so is, he, is, is he capping? Boy. There's nobody going up against Suge. So it's a hundred percent So that's cap. cap. Yeah. Daz just means well. You know, he just... He <laughs> I, said, I had to ask. He's, he means well. He just... Um, that's that's shock value for the cameras. Yeah. But they weren't fighting. So they was all... He, it basically, was it as... Was it as crazy as the movie depicted as far as when you would go to the studio? Hell yeah. Meaning the way, they, give me some times in that studio where you was like, what the hell is yeah, going on? It's, it, what the hell is going on is that every, every, <laughs> every time, you know, and I was nosy. And one thing about Suge, here we go. Suge did not allow all the other baby mamas or well, I'm a, a exes, girlfriends, whoever, he didn't allow them around. He allowed me to come. Wow. I don't know. Because he made, he always made sure Daz understood that I knew her first before you. <laughs> I met her first before you, so that stood, you know, that's my home. Which is big. Was yeah, he made it very clear. So when the other girls weren't allowed to come, I was allowed to come. Wow. I got to come to everything, and a lot of them didn't. Did that's he ever have shook. a crush on you? No, Shug didn't. He didn't like me like that. <laughs> I think he just took me under his wings because I, he was. Sharitha and him were married. Yeah, Sharitha. And he had a type. Suge has a type. It was okay. never he. His mother had a nickname for me. Like they, I was their little cousin sister. sister. Mm -hmm. And I think he took it upon himself to protect me from, because he, he, he felt it was some innocence there, and it's like you, she got to be done right. Right. Because after understand. me and Dad split up, he's like, I'm going to hook you up with somebody very nice. He's going to be a gentleman. So he took. Did he? He, he tried, and it, you know, he, for, <laughs> the first person. I mean, after you know, during that time, Daz is. Were doing you whatever. married to Daz? Common law, so people okay. don't. So the judge, when we separated, the judge looked at it as a marriage because we had been together. So assets and all things got split oh. as we were married because it was common law. You okay. know. How did that but, affect him? He didn't. It didn't affect him until his friends got in his ear there because Daz didn't care about looking out for me. Daz didn't care about me traveling with him. He didn't care. It was only when his boys got in his ear. Yeah, because you had a child yeah, for him, too. You don't, you don't need to be doing that. You don't need to be doing this. So when they got in his ear, that's when things went away. I, w I don't want you to divorce him just yet. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to go back into the... the uh, <laughs> I want to go back into when you guys were together. And I'm, I wanna, I'm just trying to understand how... Like, like you guys were together when the, when, when, when the trailer got shot up in, mm -hmm. uh, in New York. Yeah. Uh, you guys were together when Snoop's place got shot up. Yes. So that, I want to talk about those times. The, 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 the New York incident came before the sun came. New York, yeah. New York, big city of dream. Yeah, the you know the Snoop the Snoop came. I mean that's the that's their that's their second apartment on Benton. So they had the the first apartment, which was the dog pound and all. It was a rat infested place in down in, in Hollywood. They all live there. Mm -hmm. But now you're moving into an apartment, 
and you have Daz has a room, Snooks has a room, and Sharitha live next door. Mm -hmm. So we're moving, everybody is moving up, it's baby steps. Yeah. It's growing, Death Row is growing, it's still not there. Um, Daz didn't get a car at that point. Snoop got his first car, because fir the first car was my Honda Accord. So that car was the, the main vehicle, right. then Snoop got the Jeep, then eventually, Shug gave his old van to dad. So we're, everything was baby steps. Yeah. It was never, you just blessed with this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really had to be in love with him to hang in there because yeah. there was no money. I was giving them money half the time. I mean, I worked at Nordstrom and I remember giving them $50 to go get food in their refrigerator. There was not a lot of money mm -hmm. because, the, you know, at that point, they're not making money. They still have to pay for their studio time. There's still things that have to be paid for. They have to recoup. So there's still not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But I'm sticking by him. I mean, I like this guy right now. Um, I might be getting used in a sense. I don't know. But I like him. So I'm going to roll with him. You, you grew into loving him. I grew into it. And when I loved him, I loved, I lo loved that boy. It was nothing that nobody could do. And with that love comes betrayal, comes everything else. Oh God, heartache, and betrayal. Heartache. Oh, okay, God. and now, you know, back then people didn't talk about mental illness as much. They're talking about it now, but I know that you had to ha go through a lot of mental oh states God. then. I look at pictures, and God, I was going through so much hell, because I can look at the pictures, and I was skinny as hell, and I'm like, dang, I was going through so much hell at that point. Tell me something hell. that you went through with Daz that was... That, you can't even get off the top of your head oh right my now. God. Okay. One thing that stands out to oh you. Oh, God. It was Valentine's Day one year. We're in a big house, and we planned on going to the House of Blues. It was, God, it was somebody. Tina Marie was playing. Mm -hmm. So Trey D, his wife, uh, it was another couple, and we were meeting at my house. Limo picking us up. Everything is good. Everybody's there. Dad's never showed up. Never came back home. Wow. You started crying. I was like... No, I was, it was, it, I was angry. You know, it, the anger is building. Like, how fucking dare you? And this is when, you know, the groupies are coming along and, you know, he's, the, the groupies or whoever, they're there. And I'm like, how do you do this? We have this great big house. We have all this and you're, that's when I'm not coming home and I'm out there doing whatever I got to do out in the streets started taking place. And I'm like, my mother's like, why are you worried about that? Let it, let it go continue doing you but it, it kept escalating to the point where we were you know it was it, it, we, we were about to we were tear dad's never put hands on anybody but he loved to tear my cards up he, he, he was a king of that he's like you know he would never he was a he's a man of men he didn't do that but he would tear some cards up See, that's what i was going to ask you have, you, have you all ever had physical Ooh, altercation Lord jesus christ oh god that, the police knew our house very well up at silver lake they knew it very very well because you know i wanted i wanted a relationship i wanted what my family had and then i was getting the total opposite these guys didn't know at that point how to navigate a relationship yeah. they didn't know I, i've only seen a relationship i've seen marriage i've seen this but i'm trying to emulate my family and i can't I can't get this guy to do right. He won't do right, he's just out there and all of them are out there, everybody, but everybody's cool with it, I'm not. Did you ever feel like you should have listened to your mom and dated correctly? Oh God, yes, I was him? just, yeah, I was like, you know, damn, I mean, I remember we had this big old house, this big giant house and I, I said, I hate this house. People would dream, I have money in my pockets and bank accounts and I hate it all. I wanted to go back to where we started. I said, I wish we can go back to when we had nothing because that was the best time. I love the fact that you're saying all of this because you have so many women or young girls, teenagers, who are looking at these celebrities no. and want to be their wives, want no. to be their girlfriend. Mm -mm. They don't care about the cost. I've heard even some say, I don't care if they go out here and mess with this girl or that girl as long as I'm the wife. No. As long as I'm the one that he's coming home to. No, you don't feel that way. Your heart is broken in 20 different ways because you remember when there was nobody and now there's somebody's. There's these women that see what I have and they are working very hard to get it by all means necessary. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you could do. Did Snoop ever, uh, he, he probably mind his business, yeah. that being dad's is his cousin. No, he did, didn't. He got in y'all business? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it put the Because it's his first cousin. Yeah, if, if, if dad is mad at me, Snoop is mad at me too. He's no. mad at you too. Corrupt is the only one that. Now, Corrupt from the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, Corrupt remained my friend. I mean, I. 
I mean, it, it'll happen to this day. Like, if dads ain't talking to me, he ain't talking to me either. But so Snoop, Snoop basically get upset with you when dads is upset with you. He yeah, ride he with, his with his cousin. He, he gonna ride with his cousin. But, you know, corrupt is neutral because... Well, give me an incident to where you knew he was... No, like when he just said, you know, I'm not talking to you and you try to holler at him or something uh, and y'all were going through y'all thing. Give me an instant. An uh, instant. Oh, God. I think when they got... Him and Shantae got married and me and dads were going through something at that point. He was messing with somebody and dads got to go to the wedding. I didn't. Damn. And I was... Yeah, you were. I cool was with rolling Shantae. with that. That was that was my girl. This is right. my partner. But what did she say? Was she mad at you too? She just kind. Of, Shantae always kind of was quiet and stayed out the so way. So she didn't mess okay. with it. Didn't get didn't get too. So how did y'all talk deep. again? Like when y'all came together after they was we, married? Oh God! I mean, we. I was there. I mean, at all her births. I mean, I was always there with her. Her so first you, child, I was there. Second child, third child, I was there with her. And we kind of always navigated around back it. to each yeah, other. That's you know? dope. That's dope. I mean, you know, it's. Um, I think, you know, when my mom died, we weren't speaking at that point. It was something, I don't know what happened. It was probably something very trivial. But when my mom died, I really got to see, you know, people's true feelings. And she was there at my mother's funeral and okay. stayed there to make sure the flowers were right and made sure that the mausoleum, like, she took time. time. Snoop's father was there. Daz's mother was there, you know. Reggie Wright was there. Suge tried to get out of jail, but he couldn't. Sharitha Knight was there. And it, dads was there. And it showed the love that people it, had yeah, for you. We all might go through stuff, but then when it's all said and done, we gonna come back. Y'all family. Yeah. Shantae's grandmother died about four or five years ago. I was there. It was nothing. Gonna nothing. stop you from going. And I talk to Shantae's mom all the time. I mean, we all still have love. I mean, we all might have our own individual problems, but if somebody gonna screw with you, oh, we still gonna ride. <laughs> Sharita's my friend to the end, Suge's ex wife. She was there for me when my mom died. And, and after, you know, people are there when it happens, but I'm talking about after. Mm -hmm. And when I say after, Sugar and Sharitha rode that whole ride out with me in Big U. I mean, I went through hell. People didn't know it was hell. I mean, my mom died of a heart attack in front of me out of nowhere at a party, and that fucked me up. And Sharitha in, in front of me. Wow. And Sharitha didn't go nowhere. Suge wouldn't go nowhere. Big U wouldn't go nowhere. And that's why I care about those people so much because when it's all said and done, they will still ride with me. Right. So your mom, did, she didn't show no signs of anything. How old was she? She was only 58. And basically, wow. what? Uh, kind of give me Smoking. a... Smoking. 35 years. So, mm -hmm. so when, when, her life. when it happened, yeah, where were you guys? It was at a party. Yeah, it was at a... Um, it was at one of her, she was a esthetician for the stars, so she would uh, take care of, uh, when Kevin Hart first moved out here, my mother took care of his skin. Bernie Mac, she had a room at her salon just for him and would go up on set and take care of his skin, uh, go to Jamie Foxx's house. My mother took care of everybody in the industry, Alex mm -hmm. Thomas, Regina King, uh, everybody, mm -hmm. esthetician. And it broke everybody's heart at that point wow. because Kevin Hart, his wife at that moment, they were all very close to her. Alex mm -hmm. Thomas. I mean, when I see Alex Thomas now, every time he sees me, like, That's a comedian. Yeah, yeah, he said, you look like your mama. Any he on mm -hmm. schedule to come today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He'll be here today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alex, still Alex. Alex, he, he loved my mom, and my mom loved him. Regina King, I mean, those were all my mom's people. Wow. Dads. Wow. Dads took my mother's death. Hard. Harder than everybody. I mean, I'm like, are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he took it hard. Yeah, yeah. It, wow. it was because my mother loved him. Wow. She protected him. I mean, even when we were going through madness, I'm not getting in the middle of it. I love him. I helped raise this boy, and nah, y'all go through that mess. How did you get to a mental space after experiencing that um, trauma, having her pass away right in front of you? God. How did you? Um, how did you get over it? And how long did it take you to get oh, over God. it? Uh, of course. A year. So after she died. I was on one, right? And I began every day. Shug was like, he, he gave me a big old party. He was trying hard. Him and Big U were trying hard to keep me sane. And I, would, I was with them every day, like in the car. I, I remember rolling in the bin, Shug driving, Big U, P. Pablo, uh, we just would roll out, roll out. And I, it came to a point where I'm like, I got to get up out of here. 
And I made the decision a year later after my mom passed to move to Atlanta because it was too many reminders. Too mm-hmm. I go up on movie sets. I'm working on girlfriends at that time, and everybody knew my mom. So everywhere I turn, I miss your mom. I miss your mom. I'm like, uh, I'm not gonna be able to get over I this don't here. Hear this. <laughs> I want to go somewhere where nobody knows my name. Right. So Suge Knight was like, "All right, you're going down to Atlanta." You know, he's still my my protector, and he says, "I'm a when you get down to Atlanta." Um. If you have any problems down there, because you're going down there by yourself, you're going to call my boy Meech. And he's down there, and Meech is from the yeah. mm-hmm. And he's like, that's my boy if you have any problems. And I think by the time I moved down there, everything had all kind of went to smoke at that right. point. BMF got dissimilar. Yeah, I'm like, oh, don't have nobody down here? Look <laughs> out. So, but uh, my whole time in, in Atlanta, that whole, whole eight years, Big U and his wife, Hands down. Big U, his wife, his, her mother, his mother, they would always come down here to check on me. Mm-hmm. His sons went to Tuskegee. One of the sons, they, would, they were like a fixture in my life. They, they were part of my healing. You know, Suge would call me up. Part of my healing. Sharitha would come and see me. Part of my healing. Daz lived down there. Oh. He, he was did. down there. He so moved down there before yeah. you he did? He was down yeah. there. He, was, yeah. he still, he's, he's, he lives down there at this point. Yeah, that's but right. His mother, Daz's mother was the the biggest inspiration to me. I remember me. you saying that earlier. I love that woman to no end. Let she, me, it don't get no bigger than I, a real woman. I think I want to I want to go back to Trey D. I didn't get that out of you about him and Snoop's fallout and, right. you know, just them basically um, being his, his place getting shot up, shot up. I need some, what was going on at that time? And if, the, if he was with you, I, I mean, Trey D, basically, you said they all came, y'all all would be like family. Trey D was family. How did they end up falling out? I think it was over money, you know, because business practices were not run right at that point, you know. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, with Trey, he, uh, Trey D, he doesn't bother anybody. He's 100% about his business. And yeah. I wasn't there when that happened, but, you know, this it was over money it had to be about and money and this boy wanted to eat because it's kind of hard when you're around people that are eating good and you barely getting by like when you see the straight out of Compton part of the movie and I worked on that and I just remember that scene just reading that scene and you driving away in the bins and eating well and steaks and we barely getting home that's how Trey D felt mm-hmm. he was coming from a place he didn't he so, just wanted to eat. When, so were you talking to, when his place got shot up, were you talking to Daz at this time? And how was that? Daz, I mean, <laughs> Daz just found everything funny all the time. I mean, you know, everything was just funny. You know, he'll, he'll exaggerate it, you know. He, Daz, for the most part, because, you know, he's still in Long Beach. He kind of stayed out of that. I mean, that's yeah. his cousin. But then he's still, his roots are in Long Beach. So I think Daz and Corrupt, during those times, he let... The homie love came in like we got to stay out of it, you know. But you got to think about it though. He did murder was the case and all these different things and mm-hmm. uh, a, a gangster party yeah. with Tupac. Yeah, uh, that was that was Daz, right? The produce Daz production produ- of that. Daz produced like maybe seven songs on there. So how was it? How was it when 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 Pac comes? Tupac comes out of jail. Uh, I don't even know. I think Suge got him out or something. I, I'm, sure I'm a, Suge went and got Tupac out, and he signed the death row, and, and they come out with California Love. It looked like these niggas having a great time. He, he How was out. that whole situation when you first met he, Pac? He got him out. So first off, Daz was writing Pac while he was in jail because he, okay. would, he would write, and I remember I was sent off the letter. And um, Pac got home, and, you know, we were all so excited. We were, we were genuinely excited. We were. I don't know how the top tier felt because we didn't, you know, this big dog that they're putting all this money in is coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Daz, they're both Geminis. I mean, him and Pac, so Daz was excited. And Pac knew this guy was writing him, so I, I see a list of producers he wanted on his album. Of course, Daz is one, and maybe LT Hutton, and maybe Battle Cat, and, um, you know, all those guys. Um, it's feeling good at this point. Pac is home. But then he's moving people out the way, and you kind of see the shift. Like, like Dr. Dre, he immediately got out of there. That was yeah, his opportunity. He, I, he wanted to go. I mean, that was funny though because he was like Dre, Dre, Dre uh, without old gay ass Dre or something during that time. This is what yeah. Pac said. Yeah. You remember this time? Like, but before that, he was rocking with him on California Love, and they yeah. like they were having the best time. But this damn Pac could flip it in a minute, right? Yeah, he was rolling with you know Shooks. Thing. Jerry yeah. wasn't gay. Jerry's a but good guy. I know. Guy, I'm just saying you know? the way he was. Yeah. He was riding. Yeah. I mean, he gonna ride, and that's what you do with your homies. <laughs> yeah. I'm riding with my homie. Mm-hmm. I didn't, uh, Easy. When he would do Tracy wrong, 
I'm on his head. I heard the interview when y'all was on, on that radio head. station. What was I'm that all his, about? It, I mean, well, they you called was to crazy. Him, but, I, yeah. you, that was the young you. Yeah, I want to. I want to smoke because you <laughs> did my girl wrong. You out there on my own. How do y'all get on the you radio at that fight. time, though? Like, you know what I'm we saying? Trolling. We like, y'all young. called him like, yeah, nigga, we better get at this nigga right now. We called. They gave us a number. We called and we wanted it all. We and were what, in the studio. He just on the radio. He's just, in talking. The ra- he just on the radio, and I'm just like, you old nigga, you this, you there to me. You were going in. <laughs> I wanted because you mess with my Tracy was my best friend at the time. You are gonna play her, so now I'm gonna get on your head. Yeah, Dad was with you though. Yo, he was he down with it. it. He gonna come. Dad's my. Let me tell you something. Me. True story. In back of my Honda Accord, when OJ caught that case, they wrote, "What would you do in the back of my car?" They were they they, they were writing in my back of my car, and the three of us <laughs> is rolling. And they, "What would you do?" And they coming up with the song. And I said, "My Honda Accord," and OJ inspired that song. What would you do? Dope. That's dope. That's a hell of a story, you know. In the back that, of my that song car. was jamming like hell too. Did you even re- you was like, damn? When you heard it, you like, I know when they did God, that. I love that dog food album. Oh my god! I just remember all the moments in the studios, and I remember it was a couple of hooks that Dad said, "This sing this part with the, everybody else in there." You know, anybody in the studio, you gonna get down. You might have to sing. We might need your vocals right quick, you know. Oh, he might tell you that. Yeah. Anybody. Were so, your vocals on any of them? It was them? something. It, I think uh, it was one of the songs, and I remember he's. it was like uh, everybody was there, and it was just, it wasn't singing, but it was just talking, and it was it was a whole bunch of people, and I remember I added my little thing. I never really heard it, but, you know, he, he was in I the was mix. there. <laughs> That's in the mix. He was in the mix. That dog, dog, food, that dog album. food album went crazy. Man, that was the... Woo, that's when it took off. I'm like, ooh, the sky was the limit. It was almost mm. like like Snoop Dogg. What was Snoop Dogg's album called? That was Doggy Style. But dog, after Dog Style, that was after Doggy mm-hmm. Style, and that whole went crazy. Then was, It was actually, to me, I liked it better than Doggy I Style. I loved it way I'm telling you, better. I, I still bumped that. I love that. This, that whole project, because it seemed like Snoop got to do what he wanted to do. It seemed like family. Am yeah. I right? Yeah, Daz put his foot in there. And he did his thing, corrupted thing. They were all thing. kicking it, man. Oh. It was family oriented. Traveling, they got their own little promotional tours. It was about them. How did they point. meet? How did corrupt and dads meet? Okay, so uh, initially it was corrupt and uh, corrupt and da- uh, corrupt and Snoop used to battle rap together back okay. in, like at the beach or wherever. They were bad. They were opponents. Dads wasn't living here, but they they met kind of this battle. Battling, okay. And Snoop finally met his match. He met the lyrical gangster, the lyrical assassin. Pro- Corrupt was no joke. That Philly fanatic had it going on. Yeah, but Snoop was a beast. And Snoop man. was like at that time, right. you know, what I'm saying? Snoop was too. They it were made, going. Competition makes you elevate your game. Oh yeah, so but that's Snoop was do. here. Corrupt was there, so he's like, let's join forces first, because they both were super dope. Yeah, yeah. Warren G was a producer. So, Nate was the with the, the the singing man. So Snoop evidently hooked dads and corrupt up yeah they, they got to meet and they formed a dog pound at some point i mean i think at the at the apartment when everybody was living there dads and corrupt kind of got together and they formed that probably around the chronic time yeah that's when it got formed because they were forming things at that point was rage well how did rage come into it? Uh, farms there virginia i think took the bus down here like everybody <laughs> and, and, and trying to be a part of village it. recording studios in santa monica on santa monica boulevard everybody slept there grind there and were hoping to get on that chronic and they made it wow they I made wanna, it. I w- I, and i'm going to ask you this and, mm-hmm. and then because we got to get to the tupac you the you 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 hold the keys to my i'm a tupac you see it on the shirt mm-hmm. right there i'm a Thug tupac life, fan. baby <laughs> yeah i supposed to been interviewing napoleon but we're gonna set it up another time but just that whole just his whole aura how was he around you like how did you what was the thing that stuck out to the way that he treated you when you would be around i think he noticed that suge was uh, carried me under his wings kind of like you know that was my sister so it kind of emulated from him him he seen how suge really you know was like my big brother so pop kind of adopted that and treated wow. me as such i mean the boys would hang out i remember he came home all of them it, it, it was like they were all thick as thieves and would hang out and, you know, just have they, the, the men time, you know, to studio moments. And Pac respected women. That's the thing. Yeah, for sure. And I think with Pac, as we got in there, he kind of took it personal at some points that I was getting disrespected. Wow. You know, I think 
because he would always be excited, you know, at Kenya's come up. And I think he kind of, because Suge took it personal at points when he knew I was being disrespected. He took it personal, like, okay, that's like our little sister. Like, you can't do that to her. Y'all can do that to all them, but not her. He How are like you that. being disrespected? Give Come out with he was out there. Doing, with, talking with dad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I know out there exactly with God going. knows right. this everything, you know, mm-hmm. this women, you know, and. Did any of them ever step to dad's and was like, you got to straighten up? No, I mean, I'm sure Suge had talks with him, but, you know, he, th- their main point was to talk to me. They didn't, okay. you know, Kenya, you know, Suge would always tell me, beauty is only a temporary position, intelligence is forever. You keep your intelligence. Don't ever fall for the bullshit. He would always give me these pep talks. Yeah. Protecting me and building me up because you can't build him up. He is who he's going to be. Mm-hmm. Build the woman up and get her right mm-hmm. and inspire her and push her and... I always felt uh, respected by Pac. I always, I, I, I yeah. never felt like I was ever disrespected. I think he appreciated that, you know, I wasn't out there. I wasn't wilding, you know. And mm. Did you ever, like when Tupac would, after he got shot, he was pretty angry when he came back, of course. Shot me five times, real niggas don't die. All these different things he would say after he had then got over on the West, you know, West Coast uh, uh, doing his thing. Mm. Did, you ever, uh, did, did you ever see anything that was like, angry toward the east coast things that it comes it was everywhere at the time for yeah. it would have affected dads as well yeah. so yeah. he was angry at that point I mean, he was hurt and angry because in his heart you know he felt like the people that he that he trusted the most had him set up we don't know what happened but <laughs> if it's in his heart we're gonna roll what was in his heart mm-hmm. and he had you know he was upset so we became upset with him i mean uh, yeah. he's our family now so we got to roll with him you know, and it only, you know, it escalated when they went to New York, you know, but we all still love New York. Like, so was it New York, w- New York when they got, when the, when Snoop them when your, when your, I think it was some got the radio, shot. The radio got your shot. The radio got shot. Mm-hmm. This was a time where, this was a time where y'all just was visiting up there or they was visiting no, up there. No, they went down there to shoot a video. Okay. In Times Square. They brought down about a. Why would they pick to go down there? New and York, it was already New York, beefing, wasn't it? City of Dreams. No, it wasn't. It was only Tupac's situation at that point. Dog Pound wasn't really beefing with them Wait. at that point. It didn't, the beef started off after that. Really? When they shot up the yeah. trailer, yeah, because they came down there, and I, and, and, and you have, I, I understand at this point why they felt disrespected because you come into our hood and bringing low riders, and they kind of felt like you're shitting on us, like, but. The New York, New York song was a Melly Mel sample. They were playing, the original thought was to pay homage to Melly Mel. Yeah. You know, for the New York, New York. Yeah. But when things escalated out of nowhere down there, you know, it escalated. It wasn't supposed to go that way. They didn't go down there to shit on them. It was, we're going to do our video because it's, it's called New York, New York. So where are we going to film it at? Let's go to Times Square. Let's bring some low riders and have fun and keep it happy. And then it turns to kicking buildings down. After. They got shot up. That was a remix after that. They, the, the builders came in after everything happened. Yeah. That was an add-on. He was like, we're going we, we gonna to turn this up a different way. Yeah, yeah but, you know, I, they everybody hated New York, but I still had a lot of great friends there. I mean, I still love New York. I mean, yeah, they it's a lot of bad seas, but, you know, we yeah. all still love New York. Yeah, so did you end up, did you end up, because uh, I know Snoop was a, uh, Snoop was trying to play both sides. They th- they felt in the midst of this whole thing. Did you feel the same way? Mm-hmm. I was rolling with Pac at that point. I mean, you know, because, you know, me and Daz are, it's teetered all the way off. I mean, and I'm, and of course, Snoop is not, whenever Daz is not talking to me, he's not going to talk to me. So, yeah, so you ride with I Pac. I ride with the people who have been looking rocking out for me. Rocking with you. Produce. So Pac and Sugar rock on me. I'm rocking with them. How did, what did Daz and them say? They didn't care at that point. They weren't I mean, talking to y'all at no, all. No, we weren't talking. Nobody yeah, was talking. It was done. Done. Was he still? Was she still with? Uh, was Sharita at that time? Or they was they were married. They I had were a question married after for you. that. They were married after that, but they had their own relationships. The only reason I say that because I was trying to figure that transition out between that time. But I will get back to that. But yeah. I was just trying to say, okay, so when when once Pac pretty much had said, I'm uh, I'm done with him, and you see the scene where it's, they riding the jet and Snoop's thinking he's mad at him. These things probably really was going on that they what couldn't trust What are you talking about? It. On the Tupac movie? Yeah. That yeah. wasn't accurate. I mean, that, that wasn't that, accurate. You know, I mean, that, so he wasn't, that they didn't ride together like no, that, that. that. No, it wasn't, it, that, that wasn't accurate. I mean, a lot of the things, LT, love him to death, but that wasn't accurate. You yeah, know? He's just putting something in that suit, mean, sauce yeah, it up. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like Cause that. Because you wasn't, because you was down there that night Pac when that happened. No, Pac, 
did not and should were not talking to Snoop and them. We were it was everybody. Period. No, it was no talking. So they basically None. if, it, if it could happen on site if we see them too. On site because two weeks prior. He gets on the radio and, you know, he says he's cool with Biggie. And that infuriated yeah. everybody. Like, nigga, you know, I don't, we don't know what happened in New York, but if this boy is rolling with him, you got to roll with him. And, you know, Snoop crossed the line to me, you know, because Pac, he loved him. You know, he yeah. loved him. He, he, he generally loved him. And, you know, that hurt Pac to the core. Because he thought that this guy was hurt riding him. with him. He hurt him. So he died not even having no kind of love for Snoop. Mm -mm. He didn't, I mean, it was, it was, they, nobody was getting along at that point. Nobody was getting along. Not, they were on so their Snoop side. So Snoop wasn't at the hospital? No. So that's a lie. Well, he, he can come to no hospital now. When I was Because you Snoop, was at the hospital. Snoop's mother and auntie flew down there with me. Mm. She went down there to represent Snoop. Okay. Monday. It happened Sunday, late Sunday night, or between Saturday, Sunday, and we went back down there Monday. Dads didn't go down there. None of them went down there. You know, Nate Dogg was the only Dog Pound member in Vegas at this point. He's the only one. He came down because his girlfriend went down there with me, and he was infuriated. Yeah, he, he was. was oh, he's he, like, you. He was kind of, he was jealous. He was jealous. Oh, God, type. he's like, he got on that thing. Y'all ain't going to be in no, well, you ain't going to be out there with Kenya. He, ooh, he was hot at me, like, oh, you take her down here because we coming to have fun. She can't go. Really? But he, he That was came a big and, fight that night, though. It was party yeah. down there. Mm -hmm. and, but he came down there and had a good time. Wow. So And so he saved he, our lives down there. I believe Nate got us out of there because we thought it was going bad. Nate, thank God, rest in peace, Nate. Thank, you, thank God he was there. Because he gave y'all some sense of stability, stability to know how to move. He, he moved, navigated us out of there. Wow. God led Nate down there at that point. So did you talk, I know I seen on another uh, interview that you talked to Pac before he got killed. Yeah, he, before. You seen, you seen him after the scuffle after, with Orlando mm -hmm, or whatever. Before, he went up and changed his clothes and after. And, you know, it, it, he came down and I'm, I'm this girl and I'm in this suburban, right? I had this world, it was um, a rim and tire place on La Cienega and they tricked my car out. It was dropped, had rim sounds and when Pac came down he was like, damn, you got that he nigga. To, he said, damn, you got that nigga to get you another car, my nigga. And we pound and he's on the sidebar of my car and we're talking and shooting the shit. People in the car, Tasha's in the front, Nate's girl, bumping music, and I remember Pac's favorite song at that point, his favorite song at that moment was Blackberry Molasses with Bobby Valentino and that yeah. group, Mr. Blackberry Molasses. He loved that song. And I remember I played that song over and over again for Pac. I mean, the whole ride, I kept on playing it, playing, playing, because it, it, it was he his favorite song. And then he loved Mocha and Stuff, uh, the group Mocha and Stuff. He's my, you made it, because yeah. they were going to sign them to death row at one point. Oh. But, God, yeah, he... We, we, you know, that, that night we're gonna go back to that night, yeah. Ooh, like, God. like that night was crazy because did you know how they end up Orlando and him having differences like they did? Um, it, from what you know, it you was over, it was over, hear. it was over a, a death row chain. I think somebody had got a chain snatched, um, at some point, and the person who supposedly did it was there, and I think it sparked from just a gold chain. Wow, so, and you know. You can have 10 million people kicking you. I can kick you, you can kick him, but Pac's face resonated. Tupac kicked me, and he kicked me. No, no other faces are recognizable. So but On that video that night, yeah. the way you could see Pac, Pac was lit. And I just, he was I, I wish that, I know Pac was riding with his boys, but I just wish he never even had got involved in that. Like, I wish he was protected as an artist. Like, okay, we're gonna All push right. you away. Yeah. But you can't push him away. These are my homies. I'm gonna ride with them. There's he nothing you more, can do. He was more abdomen. He was more lively than anybody on that. He was video. a true friend. Wasn't trying to hear it. He wasn't gonna. He wasn't gonna. No, I'm riding with you. You you guys are here for me. You've got me out of jail when everybody left me to ride. Correct. You got me all these fancy things. My mom has stuff. My sister Setcher. Everybody is good now. It's because of you. I was wow. rotten in jail. How am I supposed to feel? That's dope. That's dope that he had that loyalty that he he had that he had that sense of uh, he I'm loved down Death Row. all the way down. With he them. loved them. So they he, protected him. He loved. He them. wasn't going to leave Death Row he, like everybody trying to say at the end. Where I'm gonna where, tell you why they say that though. They say that because a lot of people insinuate that this Michelle A thing was uh, a, a situation where it was 
it was two or three things going on with her. I don't know if this to be true. I don't know if she your home girl. I don't know her. I but I'm just Shalane. telling you. I love you. all Shooks, girl. I love Sharitha and really, her, too. I, I was going to ask you about that transition. How did Sharitha and Miss L.A. kind of transition into that situation? No, but it was, Sharitha was always the wife. She had been with Shooks since high school, right? So when it they got married but when it broke down they still remained married everybody was doing their own thing she was with uh kevin the co the policeman and suge had went on to maintain his life but it was still business they 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 navigated their business they the, the marriage was broken but they still remain married it was okay. business yeah and, business. and 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 miss la she wasn't ever with Pac like they said or do you even have were they ever together I've like never that? seen them together like that Pac was Pac had, Pac had Kadada his I'm just saying wait dads dads kind of throw these things out there shock treatment or not I'm just <laughs> telling you it's like I mean, she was like you know, like she was running around with everybody kind of I don't believe that I don't I, I, <laughs> I believe I, I believe with Michelle Michelle was mentally emotionally and physically damaged from dre you know they had very turbulent relationships she was a hurt human being that got on drugs and all that and i think she was just at her weak point looking for a way out and i think that's how the should thing went that was absolutely beyond fucking you don't do that like yeah. that's your home girl because they were her and sharita were very 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 yeah. very close so they was close when this happened they, no they were just close Period. Period. They used to travel together. They were, they were friends. Wow. They were friends. It hurt Sharitha, you know. But it did. It hurt Sharitha that Miss L. A. got with you. Hurt like, her. She's a woman. That's my friend. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I had girls that knew me that was getting at dads. I mean, I'm like, so it's just, real friends don't do that. And these weren't real friends like that. They were just, right. you know, second tier, third tier friends. But I'm just, I'm still like, how you do that there, like. I would never look at Snoop in any kind of way. I would never look at Suge in any kind of way. Or corrupt. Or corrupt. I know they exes. Ill. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. They, they're women or my friends. But you know, sometimes people, we try to put our own, like the, what we would do on other people and they not like us. And we, they go by a different system or code of ethics. That, so we got to be careful. We get hurt like that a lot of times. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm I, saying? I, I ain't, I'm not doing none of that. I'm not, uh, because that's gross. And first of all, what am I after? I'm after what she got. I'm never going to get what she got. She got because he genuinely loved her. I'm just stepping in because for some fantasy. He don't really care about me, you know? Yeah. But... Yeah, Sharita was her Miss Chalet, I don't know, you know, all I know is mental mental illness and all that was there and that probably was the leading Prompted cause because Dre, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love Dre to the end, but you were wrong. Yeah. Right? You were wrong for doing that poor girl that way. She was broken in twenty ways and how you know, I happen to have a strong mother at that point. Who's to know which way I would have went if I didn't have a strong mother and a grandmother leading me the right way. Right. You know, because a lot of things come at you. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of things come at you. People be wanting to just sleep with you just because. But, yeah. But I knew it wasn't real. But let me ask you a question about, um, so being around Pac, did you ever get to meet Jada? No. No? Because I know Kadada. she was always around. Just Kadada. Kadada. Just Kadada. It was all, when he yeah. got to death row, it was, Kadada. it was all about Kadada Jones. Okay. Quincy Quincy's Jones daughter. were there. Mm -hmm. They were, they, that was, that was, he, he, he's golden goose. That girl, you know, hooked him up with Versace. She had him in places he had never been. Took him to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. He loved Kadada. Kadada wow. was a special woman to him. I, I want to ask you about uh, this new thing Snoop got with death row. Um, how do you feel about it? Mm, well, I know it's for, you know, the whole goal is for NFT. That it's it's going to be ran kind of with the NFT feel. And I just hope that the artists get their just due. Mm. That's what I hope. You, it's not, I, I was kind of angry that they took all the dog pound because I tell you, that's my go-to. Yeah. And they took everything off of streaming. I'm like, they did. I can't they get sure my... Did. I, I can't get my. What would you do? Why fixed? did they take it off though? Because it's NFT they, it's now, NFT. so he's running it through that. You got to be able to get through somebody to get to somebody to get it, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I really don't. 
uh, you know, the verdict is not in. I'm just waiting for like a year to see how uh, it works. transpires, you know, but I do know that there will only be one death row records. Mm -hmm. It would never, I don't think any record label in history will ever give you that feeling that death row gave you. How do you feel when you hear people like Reggie Wright saying that they own like the publishing for a lot of the stuff that's being mm -hmm. dealt with, you know what I'm saying, with the Suge Re Knight. Reggie's he, cool. Reggie is tripping on Re it right now. Reggie, 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 that was the one that called me a minute ago. That was Reggie? That was Reggie. I need him over here. Yeah. You need to get, I need to talk to him. Yeah. Reggie, Re Reggie, one thing, one thing I for sure. Um, Reggie, um, Reggie's always, one thing for sure, he's treating me right, because I kind of just stay Reggie out the way. Reggie say he got money, uh, got stuff involved with that stuff that people not talking about, and he going to get to the bottom of it. He 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 he, he <laughs> got Reggie going he believe me he going to get to the bottom of it but he does know one thing for sure he does make them understand Kenya was their baby okay oh, yeah, she I was, was a good know that. girl and, and I was I didn't bother nobody I didn't and I wasn't I, I kept in my own lane yeah. but Reggie's a good person he might you never know what them dudes got I have no idea I just I hate to piss him off one day because he might have a <laughs> <laughs> he, said he, got a, he said he had something going on in the midst of that and you know it's not God. really something that he, he's getting, he said he's going to come back and get what belongs to him I, in a sense through that's, this whole death row experience Reggie, I just you know all of them they're men and and I tell, I told him, unless y'all gonna finance my birth of a crib and ladies of death row, I ain't getting in the mix of y'all. Who gonna finance it? I'm gonna be more friends with you. I mean, yeah. I, 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 it is. He, he's, he's been, he's been my partner. Sharice is my partner. I just, I, I stay out the way. Suge is my partner, and corrupt is my heart. Mm -hmm. That's my brother for life. And how did you meet Big U? I've been knowing Big U my whole damn life. Cause when, uh, as a child, when I moved Culver City right. to Baldwin Hills, Big U's cousin his first cousin uh used to like me mm. we were kids and oh god big you i i used to be scared of him i mean i was a little girl this big old guy just poked out malcolm out malcolm x glasses and i remember this guy lived in he lived in his mama's house in inglewood right in the blood side mm -hmm. he hung a big old crip rag out in front of the house flag and said i dare anybody to come uh -uh. right here and live in that neighborhood and i was like that's my big homie. That's my big uh -oh. homie. So I've been knowing him before everything. Oh, I, I've been rolling with those guys. Um, they almost made me miss my debutante ball. I mean, you know, when I was 16 years old, grandmother wanted me to go there, and I'm rolling with them and got into funk with it. I, I, my car, I had a, at that point, my, my parents had got me the, my first car was a convertible Cabriolet Volkswagen. It had, had the, um, the rims on, well not the rims, that had the blow, what was that, the radio at that point, the big Alpine radio system mm -hmm. in there and all that, and I used to drive them all around, and I'd be getting in trouble all the time. I'm like, bro, I gotta stop getting in trouble. My mom said, I, I, I gotta stop. Go to Westwood. Parents gotta pick me up. Uh, the, the, the Westwood UCLA PD got us detained. I'm like, I didn't do nothing, mom. I was just with them, they were just in my car. Mm -hmm. So I've been rolling with Big U and the homies for it since I was a little girl. Oh, wow. He's always been, you know, been my big brother, you know. He said, you almost made it in my family. You know, you almost made it in my cousin's wife. I'm like, yeah, but we were young, we were kids then. So I've been like family to him ever since then. I got adopted in back then in the teenage years. So now he's my big bro for life. Yeah, so, so. 19, I think you said it was the 90s. Not, you and Snoop talking now or no? No, I mean, I'll, let's be real. No, I don't talk I, to I, any, I, I don't I, talk to, I talk to corrupt. Okay, I, and I'm trying to understand how you was there for him when he went to jail. You, you, I heard you say that on Big Court. Shout out Big Court, that's my boy. That's, mm -hmm. He wanted the reason you're here. Mm -hmm. and, and my boy Kenyatta, I got to get him boys shout outs. But you said on there that you stayed when Master P and them left him in jail when mm -hmm. it was a universal party, right? Yeah. So and you was there and you took him home or whatever, took him where he needed to go. And now at this point, he don't talk to you. How does this, how does this life think, work? How I does think, this work? I, you think, know? I think what me and, the, me and his wife, we were very close, very close. And we had differences. So, I, I mean, honestly, I don't know. Because when I lived in Atlanta for those eight years, right? That was my best friend. The Snoop. Snoop was. The whole time. He rode with you the whole time. The whole time. The whole so you miss time. him. Huh? You miss him That's now. my friend. I mean, I'm, I'm always going to back him up. But. I do know that people change all the time. I mean, we were in Atlanta the whole time. My son was, my son was born, you know, I had a different boyfriend down there, right? 
and I would bring my boyfriend to the concert. Snoop would get Snoop and Daz would get us backstage passes. Wow. Uh, my son was by another man, yeah, and, and I brought my son to one of the shows. And Snoop got a whole room so my son could be in a room so he wouldn't get to smoke. He said, "You can you, you trying to tell me something? Is that Daz's kid?" I'm like, "Nope." We were still friends, but when I moved back to LA, it just I guess you know. And you don't know what caused the. I think it's because me and his wife aren't close, so he, you know, again, you know, if my wife is not close to you, then I'm gonna ride with my wife, you know. And but we had always been up and down, me and her, you know. But he still was cool. But when I moved to LA, just something shifted. So, so I'm, I'm all I'm I'm riding with it. Do you, you don't think know that exactly. you and her could ever be friends again? Oh no. You see what I'm saying? Like, people go through things. People change. I know I love her mother. I love her family. I love her sisters. I love the kids. I mean... Because there's a lot of history between y'all. It's just I just just think people... Like, for me, if we had a difference, nine times out of ten, I don't remember it. I don't know. So it was nothing that ever happened. So you don't remember what it it is. I think... The the thing I think that triggered her when I did the DPG, I did a... um, Documentary. Okay. Mm-hmm. And only only thing I can point it to was that the documentary, uh, I needed Snoop's interview. She was managing him, and maybe I don't think she wanted me to include him, inc- in include him, or interview him. But it was all about them. And sometimes, you know, women, you know, it's territorial. You Did know, you maybe. interview him? Hell yeah, got and, it. And that's what Stars you think. Stars pick treat- it up. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And I think we can speak after that. But then my mom died, and she was there, so I thought it was. And this is all going back to early two thousand four. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. So have you ever thought about reaching out to her and trying to talk to Is her? Is it to pride try on to... your end? Let's nah, be real. Nah, I'm open for her. I love. You I'm see a, what I'm, I'm saying? A, let me let me put it out there. I'm a, always love that girl. Exactly. Whatever it is, it's, it, it, you have to understand it's a lot that she's been through, so I don't know. I mean, you know, she's it, it's not just me. It's, I think she's falling out with a lot of people but, around her. I don't know. But one thing about God, mm-hmm. if you're a God-fearing person, right. I love the part where it says in 1 Corinthians, uh, if there's any, 2 Corinthians 5, if there's a, if any man be in Christ, he a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, yeah. all things become new. Yeah. You can always start over again. Right. And I think a lot of times people miss that part because if you're looking at it from a natural carnal state, mm-hmm. you won't see it. But when you start to look at it from a spiritual mindset, yeah. then you can get past your differences because it ain't that big. Mm-hmm. It's not that. It's, you see what I'm saying? You got to forgive. But you know what I always think about when you, when you say that or even the situation, and it might not be on your part, but you know, people t- tend to put it off. Oh, we'll make back up later on. Yeah. We're gonna make back up later on till it's too late. And you're mm-hmm. like, man, I've been putting this off for so long, and it, it hurts so mm-hmm. bad if you lose that I, person. I mean, I will always love her because, again, it's so much history, and she's probably in a different space now. Snoop is on a whole different level. He's right. on a whole different fucking atmosphere right now, and I don't know. You know what she what has to deal with. Through. You don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But if know something what happened to her today mm-hmm. and she was taken away from this earth and you had to go and help, mm-hmm. you got to go to her funeral. Mm-hmm. You got to be there like like y'all was together mm-hmm. and everything else. Mm-hmm. So why not take a, you know, what they oh, call yeah, a Hail Mary? A Hail Mary. Yeah, but, you, but I do but, express, but you know the, how I express it? I call her mama up and check on her go. ads. I, I, her mama, that's my girl. That's dope. I love that's her. That's dope. I still, I still talk to, um, my, this, here we go. This is how the love is there, you guys. So my brother under me, Kevin, is my stepbrother. He has a dinner party last year. And it's at uh, one of the big steakhouses out in Orange County. So he, got, he has the whole room. So I'm sitting in the room. There's 30 people in there. We rented out this room. And I start seeing, I see Shantae's mom pass by. I'm like, Pam's here. And I seen all the cousins and all the... Si- I'm like... So, you know, she might be coming. In. No, I seen her pass by. Oh, wow. Okay. So, I said the family's here. And her sister and I... Dope. Close. So, I come out the room and I seen her Auntie Lisa. I said, Lisa, Ken gave me a big old hug. She goes in the room and gets the whole family. They all come in here. Her whole family ends up in our room taking pictures. She didn't come. But everybody comes. That's so, dope. The, the love family, is there. the love is still there. We, we One day, you know... And I have to put it on her. It's probably her, whatever the difference is. But it was, I, I don't know what it is, but it, that, that's just her. I mean, but you love her. Love her, love her to death. It was, it, never. I love Miss Chalet to death. Them, them are my ladies right there. They, so never you and Miss Chalet, do y'all talk to this? Oh, that's my girl. So y'all still talk to Oh my to God, Sharitha's my girl. They might have differences, but You still oh love well. both of them. That's my girls, that's And they, re- they respect that. They, they no should. one gets on me when you talk to her. Even Suge's girl Stormy. I love her too. Man, that's dope. You like a bridge. Uh, we can go back to uh, uh, her, the Tammy. 
uh, we had difference, a uh, little difference, but I still had love for her. She didn't, it was always nice to me. We never had a relationship, but I have no problem with nobody. Let me tell you something. You, you got a beautiful spirit. Yeah. I mean, the way you are, the way you illuminate the room when we came in, mm-hmm. I always knew it through the phone lines. Yeah. It's just the way that you carry yourself. Mm-hmm. It, 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 I can't see how somebody could look at you any kind of way, but I do know people have differences, but Mm -hmm. just the way, keep on being that loving person that you are. Keep on shining in the midst of the darkness because we need that. People can be led out of darkness through the light that's in you. You know what I mean? So yeah. keep on doing that, man, because you put a smile on my face. I felt so good about yeah, the he conversation. Yeah, he told me. He told I me about you made, it. I was, I was like, man, you had to hear this woman. She's Because when I first, I was like, I was like, man, give me get this woman number from Kenya. And Kenya said, oh, yeah, she's not like, she's going to call her. You I have this working. thing about yourself yeah. that people, and even Big Court, he was like, man, uh, she going to come, man. But it's just like they know that you have a loving spirit. Yeah. And I it's love dope, people. man. It's I dope. love all my people. It's uh, it's not nobody on death row that has anything to def, do with death row that I don't like. I I kind of love, I love everybody. Like, just because he has a problem with, Re- I love Reggie. Reggie's been nothing but happiness. Shug, nothing but happiness. Sharifa, all of them, and they respect that. I'm gonna still talk to these people. It's nothing you can do about it. When Shug and Snoop were going through that, Shug never got mad at me because you oh you go over there with them. They gonna respect that because I love everybody. Wow, and that's, that's ain't nobody gonna ever be able to talk bad about him. You talk bad about Snoop and Shantae, I'm gonna be in your ass. Already. <laughs> so what I want to get into now, I want to get into um, what you're doing now with the costumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dope. Because so when did you start? Because you've always been in fashion from Nordstrom. Mm-hmm. When did that became a passion? Where were you then when you started drifting off into the costume? Well, my first job was at Mecca USA. That's out of New York, okay. and I was the, the West Met Coast Jim? marketing rep. Huh? That's that Mecca brand yeah. from a long time ago uh-huh. you used to yeah. carry in the store. The 90s. So I got dope. a job there. And that was my first job after me and Daz are separated. And I remember, Kenya, it's time to get, you know, like I always had my hustle, but now Turn I'm not going to be leaning on his money. I got to get my own. Right. Got a job there. And that job ultimately led to me getting into the union in 98, 99. And my first job was on MTV. Mm. And my resume went from there it went up I mean from there I went to the, the television show Girlfriends stayed right. there for five years and cause I, they, they ran for a long, long time, time. I, lay, I, I stayed with them until I moved to Atlanta okay I moved to Atlanta the first week I'm there I'm walking through Nordstrom you know mm-hmm. see a girl a very big designer Sean Barton mm. Sean Barton's like Kenya what are you doing out here I'm like you know move down here you want a job hell yeah <laughs> I'm not knowing they're doing any work down here She's working on ATL, the movie. Wow. Jumped on that movie, then stumped the yard, then there's Big Mama's House, Fast and Furious, Hunger Games, Mock and Jay 1 and 2. I jumped, three stooges. I went, Atlanta, I built up my movie resume. Wow. The it, costumes on, um, on Hunger Games was yeah. ridiculous. I learned so much on there because, I mean, I remember this, we were being in asbestos, uh, asbestos and mold and because down there it was, you just got to right. get it. But I was so happy to be working. And I worked on so much. And I knew when it was time to come home, um, Hunger Games, I'm like, okay, I need to get back home. I'm paying my union dues in L.A. and here. Oh, okay. It's time to get back home. Mm-hmm. But I came back with a different mindset. I came because back. Because you came back with a built resume. Yeah. Oh, the resume was built. But then yeah. I'm like, I'm a producer. Okay, I'm a costume designer. I'm a costumer, but I'm a producer. I produced that documentary. It didn't resonate to me that I was one of the first black women to get a deal through Black Stars with hey. a documentary. I beat everybody. Mm. And I never really carried that on and my shoulder. And that was shoulder. your first production. That was my first. I did that. Got that in 0304. Right. It, it played on Stars. I, I licensed wow. it out for two years for them, and I own the masters on it. It's mine. Awesome. I still own it. It's mine. Wow. wow. That's dope, man. So I'm like, I'm a... I'm going to, we're going to keep on flying. I right. am uh, this. So with my new projects, the ladies of death row started a long time ago. When I got home, I'm like, I assembled all the girls. I called everybody, everybody. And every, D Barnes, uh, Miss Chalet, Vivica Fox, because she was married to 6'9". He was part of the group, uh, 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 Six Feet Deep. Mm-hmm. Them girls was, they signed in the release, the release form, signing them. Vivica signed hers at three o'clock in the morning. That's my dog. Mm. <laughs> that's my dog. That's you like my, that's, I mean, her, she rode in Atlanta with me for years. Me and her, thick as thieves down there. It, it, K 
counting money in back of a car. Like we ain't going to that club. They pay. They, they, that, they pay me all my money. It's here. All right, let's go. My dog. <laughs> my dog. She that, seemed like she all business. Oh though. my god, so much business. And I assembled all my girls, and they all came through. D Barnes gave me a headache. Kenya, so what does this contract really mean? What is it? I love her to death. It's D. But the girls, we went up to Universal. We. Uh, tried to get a deal Oprah really Oprah's own label took a liking to us because we did two meetings with them but it was all about yeah. love and uh, yeah. c- couples and all that and nobody no, never knew what to do with the ladies we were putting out there as a reality and I'm like oh God. I'm off the reality tip now mm-hmm. it's, a t- it's a television series and it's a documentary mm-hmm. and I'm going to shoot it myself because I want to own everything Man. so I'm doing it myself and then this birth of a crypt I got the rights. Raymond Washington's mother, uh, 92 years old, next week. Mm. I got to send her her birthday gift in the mail so she can be happy. Shout out. 92. Um, got the rights to that. Shot a, shot a, a, a sizzle for that. Uh, Bart Big UN is my partner in there mm-hmm. because he is the crip and he represents everything. He loved the idea and symbolized my team. And we're going to get a deal with that too. I mean, wow. we've talked to everybody, but... So we you just love the film industry right now. I love it. But I love ownership. Yeah. I want to own. I love but you know a lot about it because you've been working in the back scenes doing I've all those costumes. So when you were so doing long. that, you were trying to soak up everything. Soak up the game. Yeah. And what, what? Soak probably, up the game. Probably but, didn't know what it was going to be. But God, that's how God works. Right. God works like that to where you can't only, you, you don't know what it is, but you know you're working on something. I can imagine you know where you're saying? going, though. <laughs> I was, so I used to do videos pro, during, you know, before I got in the union, before Mecca, music videos. I'm mm-hmm. a stylist, too. So Francis Lawrence was a big director with Hype Williams and Benny Boone. They were all big names down there, Christopher Robbins. I got on Hunger Games, Mike and Jay 1 and 2. Well, Francis Lawrence is now the director for all the Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. I seen him, and I was like, Francis, he says, yo, Kenya, what's up? We used to do them videos with Genuine back in the day. <laughs> and everybody's like, how does she know him? Because <laughs> he's big Francis Lawrence now. He's the Hunger Games. Yeah. And we sit up to have a com- conversation. I'm like, we started together. And look at him. Mm-hmm. That's God showing you. And then you Ava DuVernay. Let me tell you about her. She was PR for Girlfriends. Ava and I used to talk on the phone because during that time of girlfriends, the guy Reggie, the, the, the black guy on there, I was his uh, personal and his PR person. That's how I learned the PR. The executive producers put us together and I handled all his business and met Ava. Ava was just doing the PR back in the days for girlfriends and Ava Duanay is a director. So I'm inspired by her. I'm inspired by Mara Brock Akil because she got to deal through girlfriends. I'm inspired mm-hmm. by all my sisters that I started off with, and I look at them. I'm like, that's me. I love the way how you keep I'm on next. you keep on elevating because I think I read something to say that when you first started in the um, fashion industry, it wasn't black girls who actually gave you the foot up to help you. White girls only. I mean, right. I'm on wow. a show right now. I'm working on the Mass Singer and. I'm probably the only black girl in my department, and they love me. And the guy who brought me in was a, a white guy. See, and they, the, the, I mean, I have to say, I have to say, through my whole career of moving, my work at everything in Atlanta, it was these Caucasian designers that showed me love, wow. that kept me going. Can't, I mean, my daughter, I got her in the union now, and they're calling her now. So. I they thought you were up. trying to take their spot or something no, like that. The black that. girls thought I was taking their spot. Right. Black girls never cared. They, right. they came from L.A. and they're like, let's go. Mm. That's a good thing, man. Hey, That's man, cool. thank you so much. Uh, top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Any genre. Number one. Dead or alive? Yes. Dead or alive, number one. Michael Jackson, baby. Michael Jackson, mm-hmm. number, number two. two. Prince, number, number three. three. Um, Tupac. I knew, I knew that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was waiting for that name. Dope, man. Um... So how can people get a hold of you if they really wanted to reach out to you? Somebody might need some help, anything. And, and, and I get a lot of DMs, and I, I think I've helped more That's stylists. Beautiful. I talk to more people. I give my time because somebody took time with me. Amen. Um, at Kenya Wear uh, on IG, at Kenya Wear Films on IG, Kenya Wear on um, Facebook. And that's the three things I really pay attention to. I'm not into the, the, the tweeting, tweeting and all that. Tweet, uh, and I can't, I can't, no, I'm not into all that. Hit me up on IG. That's my, that's the main hub right there. Man. You can find me. Y'all better look for it. She dope, man. One of the dopest interviews I'd have had out here in Los Angeles, California, man. Hey, man, can you wear my family now? You niggas gonna get it. Gonna get it. <laughs> man, thank you so much, man. We love you. 
Thank you. And I'm so inspired by this husband and wife team. Cause uh, it's the first it's time your hope. Is it, is it the first time you've been interviewed by a husband and wife? Yeah. That's dope. Wow. First I time. I love it. <laughs> no, I love that. I'm inspired by them. I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Next, we coming. Man. <laughs> he coming. <laughs> Did we leave anything out? No, I think, I think we anything. covered everything, man. Yeah. Man, check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss's talk. And we out. <laughs>